Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu maneuvered into rougher political waters on June 3 as two far-right partners threatened to bring down his government should Israel agree to a ceasefire deal that would end the war in Gaza without eliminating Hamas. Mr. Netanyahu told lawmakers in a closed-door meeting on June 3 that U.S. President Joe Biden had not presented the whole picture when he described a proposed ceasefire from the White House last week. According to a person who attended the meeting and requested anonymity, the Prime Minister, however, expressed openness to a 42-day pause in the fighting, the person said, embracing at least part of the first phase of the three-part ceasefire plan. Biden called the three-phase proposal, which he said was put forward by Israel, a roadmap to an enduring ceasefire and to the release of the remaining hostages in Gaza. If Hamas abided by the agreement's terms, the president said it would ultimately lead to the cessation of hostilities permanently. It's time to end this war, Mr. Biden said. Two far-right members of Netanyahu's governing coalition, Mr. Itamar ben the national security minister, and Mr. Bezalel Smotrich, the finance minister, said on June 3 that they could not accept any deal that stops short of completely eliminating Hamas. As Mr. Biden described it May 31, the Israeli military's attacks in Gaza had already eliminated Hamas as a major threat, and that, at this point, Hamas is no longer capable of carrying out another October 7. But in the views of Mr. Bengver and Mr. Smotrich, whose parties make up a small but critical piece of Mr. Netanyahu's majority, the proposal does not go far enough to guarantee Hamas destruction. The men on June 3 threatened to pull out of the coalition, taking down the government with them, should the Prime Minister accept a deal that stops short of destroying Hamas. If the government, God forbid, decides to adopt this proposal of surrender, we will no longer be a part of it and we will take action to replace the failing leadership with a new leadership that knows how to defeat Hamas and win the war. Mr. Smotrich said. Mr. Bengver said that what Mr. Biden presented would mean the surrender of Israel and the end of the war without achieving its main goal, the destruction of Hamas. Without Mr. Benver's party, which holds six parliamentary seats, and Mr. Smotrich's party, which holds seven, Mr. Netanyahu would likely struggle to remain in office. The Prime Minister told the legislators June 3 that he would not agree to completely end the war without Hamas defeat or surrender, said the person in the meeting. The Prime Minister's office reiterated that point in a statement, saying, the claims that we have agreed to a ceasefire without our conditions being met are incorrect. Mr. Netanyahu's comments underscored how he has struggled to navigate competing pressures from Israel's allies and the international community, which are demanding a stop to the fighting. And his right-wing coalition partners, who want Israel to forge ahead in Gaza until Hamas is eliminated. Dr. Shira Efron, a senior director of policy research at the Israel Policy Forum, said that although Mr. Benver and Mr. Smotrich were part of a once-in-a-lifetime coalition, they were willing to topple Mr. Netanyahu's government and lose their powerful ministerial posts in the process. They're true ideologues, she said in an interview. Mr. Matthew Miller, a U.S. State Department spokesperson, said on June 3 that Mr. Biden had anticipated that the plan would be unacceptable to some members of the Israeli government. And of course, we've seen some members of the Israeli government already come out and oppose it, Mr. Miller said. But he said that the proposal was in the long-term security interests of Israel. It's obviously in the long-term interests of the Palestinian people, as well. Mr. Miller said that since Mr. Biden announced the plan on May 31, Secretary of State Antony Blinken had spoken to the foreign ministers of Turkey, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Egypt and the United Arab Emirates.
he had also spoken to Mr. Benny Gantz, a member of Israel's War Cabinet, and to Israel's Defense Minister, Yoav Gallant. We are completely confident that Israel supports the ceasefire plan, Mr. Miller said, adding that it was submitted last week to Hamas, which has yet to formally respond. Hamas on May 31 said that it positively views the proposal as described by Mr. Biden. It has not said whether it would accept the deal. On June 2, Mr. Ghazi Hamad, a senior Hamas official, told an Egyptian news outlet that the ball was now in the Israeli court. Mr. Netanyahu has insisted that the ceasefire proposal would enable Israel to continue fighting Hamas until all its war aims are achieved, including destroying the military and governing capabilities of the group, which led the deadly October 7 attacks in southern Israel. Two Israeli officials confirmed that the offer shared by Mr. Biden generally aligned with the most recent ceasefire proposal that Israel had presented in talks mediated by Qatar and Egypt. As much as the world's focus has been trained on the spiraling death toll and the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, in Israel the focus is on the safety and release of the hostages. Many of them civilians captured on October 7 and taken to Gaza. Adding to the political pressures on Mr. Netanyahu, Mr. Gantz, a centrist, has threatened to leave the emergency wartime government unless the Prime Minister agrees by June 8 to a plan that brings home the hostages. Addresses the future governance of Gaza, returns displaced Israelis to their homes and advances normalization with Saudi Arabia. If you choose the path of salads, dragging the country into the abyss, we will be forced to leave the government, Mr. Gantz said in a televised news conference in May. We will turn to the people and build a government that will earn the people's trust.